<laughs> Sorry to have you guys come in on a holiday, but uh, um, standard normal for us. Um, it's kind of nice to get into a game week where it's actually game week where you're, Sunday's a Sunday, Monday's a Monday, Tuesday's a Tuesday. So uh, our kids were locked in yesterday, got good work. Um, uh, from from our point of view, we're actually healthier for this game than we were last uh, last week, except for obviously Ryan Poley. Um, uh, other than that, our guys have been uh, uh, a little bit better. Um, full goal, being able to practice. There were a number of guys uh, last week that we held out going into that game. Um, got a little bit of work in right before, but hadn't really had the 10 days prior that I was really hoping for. So there were some bumps in the road, but I thought our guys handled the game very, very well. We rewarded and, and uh, uh, moved on uh, last Friday uh, from that game. I thought to have 27, I think there was 27 guys that took their first reps of college football uh, to play eight true freshmen, which was a pretty large number for me. Uh, and then several junior, I think there were four junior college players that took their first reps here overall. So there was a, a lot of guys taking reps for the first time to get out of there with only a couple of penalties. Um, really, the only miscue in a kicking game. We had one guy, Colton Jackson, didn't get out there for the PAT field goal. And that always seems to happen with one guy at the beginning of the year. So really just to have that one miscue was very positive. I thought overall they ran the ball extremely well on defense, played, uh, played pretty smart, kept the ball in front of them, leveraged and tackled well offensively. Uh, after the first 10 plays of the game, really, uh, I thought efficiently uh, handled things pretty well. Um, uh, blocked things up front, uh, had some movement uh, early on. It cost us an issue and uh, some stuff that can easily get corrected. So with that, we'll move into our preparation. Got a tremendous opponent in TCU. Got um, you know, four of their five guys up front on, def on offense. Our, our seniors played a lot of football, senior quarterback, um, senior running back, senior tight end, three senior wide receivers. Just... A lot of talent on offense. Obviously, they're very, very talented, very, very fast, very athletic. Um, uh, did a lot of good things uh, in their game on Saturday. Defensively, they're, as always, very well coached. Uh, stay square to line of scrimmage. They run extremely well. Got got players all over the place that uh, may not be uh, uh, multiple year starters, but have had a lot of experience and the best, especially in the back end where they're uh, they're very, very confident in the way they play and, and how they run to the football. Got, in my opinion, probably one of the best uh, return guys in Turpin uh, that we've faced even in my time here uh, overall in the SEC. I just think a really, really dynamic player that's very, very tough to uh, uh, game plan around. And, and, and we have to be aware of him in a kicking game at all times. So we have our work cut out for us, but uh, should be a live crowd here. I'd really encourage everybody uh, to get here. Uh, 230 atmosphere should be absolutely awesome. I think the stadium with it being enclosed, even though it's not fully finished, has made a, a significant change in the volume, even with the small crowd that we've had in there. So. Uh, should be a sellout by Saturday, and I and, uh, uh, really think it should be a very, very loud environment. This is a team that communicates a lot at the line of scrimmage um, offensively, so the more volume we can bring uh, to the fight would be better uh, for all of us involved and, and obviously uh, to make for a great home crowd environment. So other than that, open up for questions. Yeah, um, well, kind of a little combination. Uh, we'll we'll uh, obviously uh, uh, Kay Rich has played corner as well. Uh, Cameron Curl, I, I thought going into last week's game, obviously you couldn't foreshadow anything like this, but we were really, really excited about Cameron Curl, Brito, and and Shevin Calloway. And obviously they got a lot more reps. Um, uh, one of the blind side uh, good things was obviously got hurt in the first half, so we got a lot of reps of those other corners. And it'll, it'll be who starts on Saturday will be a lot based on how they handle the week um, and see who that is on Saturday. But it'll probably be. Uh, one of those three players in that spot uh, and, and, and just kind of see where it goes. What is Cole's plan on the timeline? You know, he hadn't even had surgery yet. We wanted to get his parents in town. So um, until they get in there and kind of see exactly what um, uh, structurally has to take place, uh, we won't know. But it's significant time this year, and obviously he's got a red shirt year available. How tough is it losing him? The same for the first game of the season against a guy like You know, it's football. It's football. It's a football. I mean, you know, we've seen guys this year already with knees, uh, guys already with uh, uh, shoulders. Um, you know, the game is a violent sport, and, and uh, at any given time, anybody can be lost. It's just uh, one of those things, next man up and, and an opportunity to move forward. Any concerns you do with Kevin Richardson back and the referee shuffle? If we move Kevin Richardson, it might be a concern, but I don't think that'll be um, the main main uh, way to solve uh, the new, new transition. Again, it'll be from those three corners I mentioned. Yeah. You know, their plays are a lot on the perimeter, uh, but on the same account, they are uh, uh, shorter by nature. I think the first time that I really experienced that was uh, when I was at K-State. We were defending Jason Sproul uh, during, um, uh, um, 
you know, scrimmages and whatnot, and all of a sudden he kind of pops out from behind a tackle. So I think when you are of a smaller back and or a smaller offensive player in nature, that does get, but they're just really gifted. You saw the one play where Snell came all the way across the grain and just extremely shifty, gifted, um, uh, can make you look silly in a short amount of time. The things that we did last week well, we have to do this week. We have to obviously contain leverages. We have to tackle well in space uh, and not have missed tackles. Um, I wouldn't say there's any one offense that made me start thinking about, I think the three, four fit what we can do better. Um, but on the same account, one of the advantages, I think without a doubt to the three, four is being able to uh, hopefully line up more efficiently in a shorter amount of time, uh, be able to get more athletes on the field on their feet, uh, and, and be able to be diverse, uh, when the ball snapped. You mean uh, for him personally, or? Yeah, um, you know when we go to the nickel package, I guess he he in this game you saw him at a certain spot. I think the part that Randy brings to the table is he's very uh, very powerful. Uh, he's a natural pass rusher, whether it be to the boundary or to the field or even inside as well. Um, I just think he's a a very talented athlete that we're we're going to try to maximize the reps we can get on him. And and um, uh, I tell you the the, the nicest surprise. In my opinion, to, to, to fall camp has been to what the play the play of Dwayne Eugene. Uh, those two complement each other very very well and and kind of feed off each other. Uh, we'll use Dwayne in the same role that we'd use uh, Randy uh, in nickel situations when one of those guys is off the field. How did uh, Clary? You know, Clary was uh, from the first snap. You know, we ran a little ISO play right by right behind Ty, and he just guy tried to come across his face. He just bared him down, walled him off. Um, uh, a, a pretty routine play, but it's not always routine for a, a newcomer, especially the first snap of the game. Just handled everything very, very well. Um, uh, had minimal, I, I believe only two maybe mental errors or, or bust on an entire day. Played extremely hard, was on his feet all day. Um, really never lost. Uh, I, I, I don't think he ever lost, uh, you know, lost in the moment. I don't think he ever got the game got too big for him, and that's going to be huge, uh, obviously, this week in our preparation. You know, um, Brian came in and played really well. I think the part that was really the best part to the day is when we did start subbing in some of those two offensive linemen. Um, all of them played really well. Brian Wallace, uh, 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 um, uh, Jalen Merrick played really well. Paul Ramirez, Zach Rogers, Jake Rollerson. Um, several of those guys played well, which gives us a little bit of bit more flexibility going into this week. But yeah, we tried to get our best on the field and, and really um, as Jeremy got more and more reps, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, as Ty got more and more reps, he just uh, looked like a natural to be at that spot and haven't seen anything look back since. Uh, right now, we'll start that way, uh, unless something changes during the course of the week. But uh, uh, Johnny played really well at right tackle, um, had been you know, doing OK at guard, but just seems a little, little more at home at tackle. And again, those two guys, uh, uh, Ty and, and, and Johnny, were, were as is the case a lot of times, you get them on campus. They're just they're just more athletic than you thought they were uh, during the recruiting process. Uh, very very intelligent um, uh, and, and diligent guys. That it means a lot to play for Arkansas. You, you uh, really just comment on the a gap. Um, is that a big part of the game plan for students or the year? Well, I, I think the part that you could see early on, uh, from my point of view as a head coach, they were not going to let the ball go outside. Right. So I mean. Whatever they take away, you got to be able to adapt and move forward. They, some of our first perimeter plays, you could tell they were just racing up the field, so that obviously opens up things inside and vice versa. What's up? Yeah, really. Um, um, I was very. I think that was another good. As we got through fall camp, you realize that Hayden had made a really big jump. Um, not that Kendrick hadn't, but uh, those two together form a, a really nice duo. Um, we, we, we did it on Saturday where, okay, this series was going to be Kendrick, the next series was Hayden, and vice versa. But both of them, uh, I think both of them played with great base. They showed good power. Uh, when, when, when Tom's talking about hammering up in the A-gap, some of our ISO plays, those tight A-gap, B-gap plays, those were a lot of one-on-one -on -one blocks with a linebacker and a fullback, and they just handled it very, very well, and they're big guys that got power. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Devois, um, 
played well. Uh, um, I don't I don't see any um, thing that's going to change him out of that out of that spot. Um, he he probably has got the best understanding and and also did some nice things in blitz pickup. Um, uh, David again, I, I think we listed those three, uh, one, two, and then three. But uh, David, um, for the first time playing in our offense, I thought did extremely well. Even that first touchdown, just great patience watching the offense he came out of wasn't anywhere close to what our offense is as far as what they ask a running back to do. You know, reads, reactions, tempo. Um, so I thought he handled that very, very well. And then he, as you can see, he's got great hands. He's got good vision, ability to make plays. Then Chase Hayden. Um, as much as you may not believe it, I don't think he was even close to, to what he has shown us at times. He was, I think, even self-admitted a little bit, you know, taken back for that first first uh, uh, first half for sure, and then kind of settled down into it. Um, uh, I think I, that's why I kept playing him a little bit more. I just thought he needed more and more reps to get used to game speed and and, and really like where it is. And then T.J. Hammonds, uh, you know, we rolled in there a little bit, but it was just also just a matter of, um, you know, those three guys, and then and T.J. will play in that role in certain capacity, but also I want to shore up our wide receiver position. And uh, I thought Jonathan Nance came in and did some things. We already know Jay Red can do it. I thought Deion Stewart did some nice things. Jordan Jones, LaMichael, you'd like to see him make that catch, you know, and play with a little more consistency. Uh, I think Brandon Martin um, is feeling better now. He he was really limited up to about two or three days out from the game. So to get him more reps now, in addition to Davion Warren and, and uh, uh, Gerard Barnes, I mean, there's a host of guys there that we're trying to get reps and get out there. but. Um, I think T.J. Hammonds could be one of our top three wide receivers as well if he gets the reps. Yeah, we didn't want to go much past uh, uh, halftime with him. Just, um, you know, he was, you know, him and there were a couple other guys that will rename nameless, faceless, didn't have a lot of reps going into that game playing with the one. So I knew that first quarter was going to be a little bit of some, 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 some bumps in the road while we got it going. And I thought it was uh, handled very, very well. They responded. I thought the play that Austin made on that third and four just kind of was vintage Austin that kind of rallied them all and said okay now we know what we're doing and let's roll so I, I, I really I really liked the fact we had some bumps you didn't like to live through them but the way we persevered and responded was really good. You said Patterson? Yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, since I've been in this game, even before I came to this league, you know, Gary's got a tremendous uh, reputation for, for um, obviously what he's built there at TCU, what it is. Uh, just uh, sit down and watch the film uh, of the game Saturday night. It's it's everything you'd expect. He's got playmakers on offense, um, defensively. They, they they play his scheme very very well. They're very smart. They're they're uh, very well coached. My guess is they're going to win a lot of games. Um, this is a big matchup just because of the non conference deal and. Uh, for them to come to our stadium today, uh, this this weekend, I really want I want to make this our type of game, you know, SEC type game and, and an Arkansas game here at home and and see what happens. But um, yeah, they, they, I think injuries, you know, and, and uh, uh, last year there was there was uh, uh, you know our game was obviously a nail biter and and we came out on top. But there's a lot of close games last year, so um, everybody that's I think in that program probably heard it all winter, heard it all spring, just like we did, and and are going to come out ready to play. Well, I think there was a lot that we didn't do. Uh, you know, offense, defense. We didn't we didn't bring a lot of variation on defense. Uh, we were just playing sound fundamental football. Want to keep doing that offensively. Uh, didn't didn't really feel the need to um, do anything more than our first down, second down, uh, and then react to that third down play as they happen. But uh, the thing I've really been encouraged with is you know the ability of last year when we wanted to take it a little bit deep, or even the last two years, you kind of knew who those guys were and how to defend them. You know, now we have. In my opinion, Jordan Jones, uh, uh, Jay Red when he's back healthy, which will be this week, uh, uh, Gerard Barnes, uh, um, um, uh, uh, T.J. Hammonds, uh, and and really to a certain degree, Jonathan Nance, guys that that are very good at vertical routes. Um, that uh, it's going to be that in combination with our run and play action game should be tough to defend. Yeah, you know, I think, what was he, 17 or whatever it was, and then he had and then had two drop passes, you know. So, I mean, he, he could have had a pretty, a very impressive day, but that's just standard Austin. He's going to always compete against himself. He's never going to be satisfied. I thought what he did 
uh, even for himself, you know, we, we hadn't hit him since last year. So he hasn't been hit since the Virginia Tech game either. You know, we don't hit our quarterbacks at practice. So uh, I think that third down play, that third and four is where he all of a sudden was up in the pocket, had to turn around, and he got um, uh, chased from inside out and then also is in a scramble play. Um, I think that kind of woke him up. I'm like, all right, you know, now this is this is what I do. This is how I do it. Uh, he did get hit, I believe, five times, six times. Um, uh, you know, there was two that were, uh, were uh, um, protection breakdowns and then two where they brought some pressures that, that, that we hadn't worked and weren't able to uh, get a guy totally in front of him. He didn't take any huge hits, but we definitely don't want him to be on the ground at all. Any hit that he takes, we don't want. Uh, Josh Paul is, is here on campus. Um, uh, yeah, he, he just redshirted. I mean, there's nothing uh, nothing unusual about him. Alexi isn't totally cleared yet. We could have uh, – what I did on Saturday is I took a group, I think there was 21 players that had eligibility to – you know, so they're, they're, um, I don't know the best, they're eligible to play without penalty. Uh, so we took a, a busload of those guys over, uh, 21 guys on, on Thursday. They dressed up, suited, and played in a game. Um, you know, there are no restrictions when we're out of conference. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, the SEC, this is the only league that I've ever been in that does that, only allows you to dress 80 uh, for SEC games. So it's very restrictive in, in, in the ability to play kids that are in, involved uh, in the program. So I wanted to take full advantage if we had a chance to play some guys and we were able to do that uh, with a number of guys getting their first reps. Um, but uh, Alexi was not cleared, uh, so that's why I didn't take him over on Saturday. Josh Paul was not in OFI, five, but yeah, he's practicing. He's 100. Yep, yep. As soon as school started, he was with us. He did not play, but he took the trip, and and you know he's right on the verge. Um, uh, it, again, had a really good fall camp, then kind of it was slowed by an injury. He came back, and we're just uh, we got multiple um, guys playing, and and um, Coylan's a very talented. You know, this the one thing about Coylan is this: he's never played wideout full time. You know, so. Uh, he's beginning to learn the details of that. Uh, even though he's naturally gifted, he's a playmaker, athletic, big, can run. He listens to everything. He's doing everything right. Um, I just think when you start looking at uh, the guys that we have uh, uh, with with Jay Red, with with uh, Deion Stewart, with Jordan Jones, with Michael Petway, um, with the new additions of the two junior college players, and Jonathan Nance and Brandon Martin, uh, and then you throw in the two other freshmen, Davion Warren and, and Gerard Barnes, it, it's just hard to get get him out there and, and, and say that he's that much significantly better than those other guys to make him play now versus potentially what he could be three or four years from now. You know, um, uh, as we saw last year, he's very athletic, probably a better on the move out of the pocket, um, throws a very accurate ball um, uh, when he's on the move and, and to both, both sides, right and left. Um, looks like he has tremendous presence, uh, a better understanding of what, what – uh, what the coaches are asking him to do uh, between plays, he, he he really seems to be in control. So, uh, a dynamic player that we got to keep uh, keep in, in in the pocket and hopefully uh, uh, try to try to uh, impose our will. I didn't even know it existed. Good job, Patrick. Uh, I, I didn't I didn't wouldn't be able to recite him. Uh, um, no, I didn't. I didn't. I'm excited to play non-conference big time, you know, and TCU is as good as it gets. You know, there's a team that was on the verge of everything just a couple of years ago, and, and these games are scheduled so far in advance. I mean, this one was on the docket, I believe, before I got here. Um, so um, to get them to come to our place, it just seems like all these games, we always play at the other guys' place first, you know. So I'm, I'm excited to get them to return here, and I think our kids are, are very excited. And I really mean it. I mean, I hope this crowd – um, I know they will. Uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere and uh, 2.30 kickoff, CBS, and, and um, you know, the, the feature game of the day on that. It's, it's just a fun time to be here. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I get, I, you know, I've been meetings on that during the spring, but uh, I mean, I know what it's going to kind of look like, but um, I just go over there every time and just kind of, now I will say this, I think the, people are going to be amazed, even though it's not finished, it's enclosed. And I think it's a really when we're we're in there with just music and a smaller crowd, it's de it's definitely resonating on the field a lot louder than I've ever heard it. So you'll look, I mean, for the first time for anybody that's ever been to the stadium, it's going to be an enclosed stadium, and and 
you know, we're getting a new locker room out of the deal, which is absolutely lights out. Our, our, the renderings of that um, are off the charts. We'll be able to use that huge in recruiting. Um, uh, the the uh, facilities and the um, upgrades for – I know the people that have gotten a hold of some of those nice suites. I mean, those are – those are big time suites as well as all the other ones they built in down there. So it, it should just overall enhance and help the program. Yeah, you know, um, just going from left to right, Colton, um, you know, I think had some, you know, even though he started two games last year, I think he uh, had had a really good fall camp. And I think just, just the speed of the game got him on a first, fourth, and one. There was a guy took an inside move. Um, now he hit the same move again later on and blocked it up no problem. Uh, there was a third, well, actually on Austin's interception, you know, he got beat around the edge. Um, so we're just talking about straining and finishing and, and doing the things you need to do. You can't just stop. And, and uh, he's a very willing soul, very athletic, and I think going to see a big jump from year, um, game one to game two with him. Yelder for Holt, I believe, graded out the highest of all of our linemen. Um, I, I nominated him for SEC lineman of the, of the week. He's, uh, he's really uh, um, taken a huge step in his – uh, not only his uh, ability and skills, uh, but also just his f football IQ. He's a lot smarter than he was a year ago. You know, you're coming around the edge and maybe you're a puller and you realize you got to tempo yourself, you got to keep your pads down. It sounds easy, but you're just excited to usually get to point B and you tend to rise your pad level. He's able to stay down. Uh, his pass pro was really, really, really significantly better. Um, and then Frank plays solid. Uh, uh, and then I, we already talked about Ty and, and uh, at right tackle, I thought Johnny Gibson did some good things, but Brian Wallace came in there, and, and uh, he's definitely getting one reps uh, this week as well. So we, we have a little bit more depth at that line position more than we ever have. Brad, I'm not going to come in to follow up if you warmed up after the game, but everybody's got their superstitions. I always figured one of yours was the, uh, the ring break. Yeah. You know what? Technically, it kind of was a windbreaker, I guess. It wasn't just the material that everybody wanted, I guess. Um, there was a white one, a red one, and that one, and that one looked like the coolest. Uh, I hadn't seen him. I always say, surprise me on game day. I don't really go in there with an idea of what I'm going to wear. Um, uh, it just kind of kind of happens. So I don't I don't know what's going to happen this week. Um, Um, it had. I, I'll definitely have something with long sleeves. I don't think you ever see me sleeveless. Um, that was the only time I ever really remember is when I wore a golf shirt. We got we got our we got our business handed to us, and I, I'm fairly sure it was because it was sleeveless. Uh, but we'll see. I did switch sides. Yeah. I sat behind the bus driver now, mainly because there was more room. So